Mad Men is an American television drama series about the advertising world of the United States in the 60s. The show is about ambitious men and women who do anything to sell. It's about hunger, need and greed for money, power and sex. Mad Men is an award-winning and critically acclaimed show, but soon it's over. Season 6 has ended and season 7 will be the last, according to the creator Matthew Weiner. Soon we will finally know the mysterious Don Draper's ultimate fate. The end has been around since the beginning, however, because the 60s are marked by societal changes reflected in the Mad Men. The male domination and sexist jargon in the work life is coming to an end, even if only slowly so. Smoking and alcoholism in the office are also coming to an end, and they are all the more seen as real health problems. The Cuban Missile Crisis and the Soviet nuclear program in turn breathe a fear that the world will perish and that life hangs by a thread. The keywords of existentialism, freedom, responsibility, choice and anxiety are useful to open up mad men's dark and complex depths under its flashy surface. The show is characterized by the existential feeling that we we'll live in constant uncertainty in a seemingly meaningless and absurd reality. It's also characterized by the feeling that at the end of the day we only have ourselves to blame. An important part of Mad Men is the study of its main character Don Draper's existential quest for meaning, happiness and identity. There are several men often men, and madmen for that matter, which can help us understand Draper's quest through the 60s. At the same time, they can help us understand our own quest in 2013. The Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard writes in the book Either Or, My sorrow is my knight's castle, which lies like an eagle's eyrie high up upon the mountain peaks among the clouds. No one can take it by storm. From it, I fly down into reality and seize my prey. Kierkegaard's description brings the Russian author Fyodor Dostoevsky's outcast to mind. The sick man in the novel Notes from Underground. In this novel, the narrator has isolated himself and gone underground to aim the pencil against a world that he refuses to conform to. The narrator is both conceited and self-loathing, but most of all he hates people around him, to the extent of drowning in spite and ink. He writes, In their eyes, intelligence equals batches of rank. At 16, they already talked about where to make the best career. Much of this was of course a result of stupidity and bad role models who surrounded them through childhood and onwards. They were already ruined morally, had become little monsters. Don Draper is also trapped in his grief like Kierkegaard. He doesn't harbor the disgust of Dostoevsky's outcast, but he carries a burden that no one can lift from his shoulders. Draper has several features in common with Kierkegaard, who is usually acknowledged as the first existential philosopher. Draper and Kierkegaard both have a serious disposition, a problematic relationship with their fathers, multiple personalities, problems with women and a longing away from stifling norms. Although, at least in the beginning of Mad Men, Draper is leading the life that Kierkegaard abhors the most, the perfect life. Kierkegaard mocks people who prefer well-regulated societies where everything is timed to the minute. People like Draper who gets married, raise children and has a successful career precisely as expected. People who buy the right clothes, car and television. If the society is Christian, then they go to church. If the society is communist, 
then they attend party meetings, because it's what you do. The German philosopher Martin Heidegger talks about the importance of being true to yourself, to be authentic and stand up for what you believe in, rather than creating shallow relationships. Today, for example, it's tempting for the vain to count the numbers of friends on Facebook and engage in anti-social me-booking rather than to value real friendships. The French writer Jean-Paul Sartre also talks about authenticity, neither to deny the responsibility of one's actions nor to blame the circumstances. This is to have bad faith in Sartre's words. To live in bad faith is to deny your freedom and see yourself as an object without choice, rather than a free subject. Don Draper is a master at keeping his relationships on a superficial level and living in bad faith. He is both uncaring and unfaithful, an alcoholic and a womanizer. Like other famous Dons, the Spanish monk Tierso de Molina's Don Juan and Mozart's Don Giovanni. He has a demonic thirst for life. At the same time, he's arrogant and cares more about his own pleasure than the feelings of others. He finds peace in the bottom of the bottle. It's Draper's way to relieve his anxiety. He drowns himself in whiskey and women. According to Kierkegaard, such a self-indulgent life will never be satisfactory. A life that is limited to feeling pleasure and avoiding boredom is doomed to eventually repeat itself endlessly. Another glass, another sail, another girl, but the same old emptiness, thirst and futility. Draper is stuck in a vicious circle of short-term pleasures. He's sick because he's eaten too much candy. In the words of the Buddha, Draper is clinging to his ego and refuses to change. He's looking for a fixed point in a liquid ocean. Therefore, he suffers. The American author Brett Easton Ellis writes about an even more tormented man than Draper in his novel American Psycho. The protagonist, Patrick Bateman, is well-educated, intelligent and wealthy. He's living the dream in Manhattan with a beautiful woman, buddy and apartment. But behind his perfect facade is nothing but emptiness. Bateman suffers from the feeling that everything is insincere and meaningless. He feels that others create his fate. His movements are constructed. Sex is mathematics. There is something fundamental that is missing. Bateman says, love cannot be trusted. Surface, surface, surface was all that anyone found meaning in. This was civilization as I saw it. Colossal and jagged. In the novel Fight Club by the author Chuck Palahniuk and its film adaptation by the director David Fincher, both guys from the States, a similar feeling is expressed, that everything is insincere and that we have become our own strangers. We buy things we don't need, it said in Fight Club, with money we don't have, to impress people we don't like. There is often a gap between ideals and reality. Our self-image jars with how we actually live. We are outraged by the fact that children work hard in factories and on the streets of Bangladesh instead of going to school. As consumers, however, we are looking for cheap clothes. We are troubled by substandard animal transport, but as consumers, we are looking for cheap foods. The result is often that we tamper with integrity to make a buck. First and foremost, we are consumers and shopping is mathematics. We have no real choice if we are constantly running for the cheapest price. We have no freedom when corporations are choosing for us. And without freedom and choice, we are objects rather than subjects. Hence the feeling 
that we don't even know who we are. Don Draper is lost. The grief is his knight's castle that no one can storm. No matter how much power and pleasure he gets, it seems like nothing can save him. The end has been around since the beginning of Mad Men. Draper sees the vanity of it all, constantly. Neither his relationships nor happiness last. Everything around him is on the decline. The Kennedy brothers are shot, as well as Martin Luther King. The only thing that lasts is sorrow. Kierkegaard says that it's useless trying to escape despair. A life devoted to flee or disguise despair is paltry. But we can choose despair. If we understand what causes our melancholy and acknowledge our anxiety, we can build a more transparent self, free from hidden fears and regrets. It's hopeless to aim for a life without pain, but at least we can choose an authentic life. Rather than being overwhelmed by the emptiness that we try to look away from, even though it constantly returns, we can look it in the eyes. Instead of pretending that the end doesn't come, we can embrace the change. Rather than cling to the ego, we can let it go and start to grow instead. When we idealize ourselves and lie to the people we love, it's hardly surprising if we wake up one day like Don Draper or Franz Kafka's Gregor Samsa, transformed into a giant insect with a hard shell on the surface that's driving us mad and the voice inside both ones being none.